All right, so today I've got a treat for you. I'm hanging out with Steve Lewis, the founder of Gideon's Bakehouse here in Orlando. We talked about branding, we talked about community, and yes, we talked about cookies. I'm excited for you guys to check it out. This is Steven Lewis from Gideon's Bakehouse, and this is the Orlando Real Podcast. Steve Lewis, everybody, how are you, man? I'm good, how are you? Good, man, thanks for hanging out. Thank I, you for having me. I'm, I'm a look- fan. Um, I'm I'm a huge fan of yours. I've been looking forward to this for a really long time. And uh, so, if you had if you were if you're in LA and you had to be like they're like, hey, I'm Steve, and they're like, what do you do, Steve? How do you how do you respond to that? Well, I, I, as a general rule, I try not to talk to other human beings. I'm a recluse, <laughs> so I don't Fair. know if that opportunity would 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 uh, present itself. Yeah, uh, I I tell people that I, I have a little bakery in in Central Florida. Just a little bakery. Yeah. I mean, that's how I perceive it. Yeah. Well, it's come, it's come so much more than that. I feel like it's, uh, not only are the, are the bakery, is it, is it incredible, but it's had this cult following locally and internationally, which I feel like we'll dive into, but take us back to the beginning. So East End Market, you open up. When did that happen originally? That doesn't even feel like the beginning to me. Oh, take it back. Yeah, the beginning for me is being a, an emo teenager, all sad and trying to deal with the stress of being a 13 year old. <laughs> Uh, and I, and I learned that, uh, baking was my stress hobby. No way. Yeah. So I started working on a chocolate chip cookie for me as like a little personal project yeah. when I was a kid. Uh, so the, 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 the cookie is, it was never developed and meant to be an actual baker. I never meant to do this. This is all an accident. Where'd you, where'd you grow up by the way? I'm from New York originally, okay. but I, I've spent a chunk of, uh, 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 my life in Satellite Beach. My family moved to Satellite Beach, and then I moved to Orlando twenty something years ago. Wow! 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 Yeah. So thirteen, and so what was the original? Was it like break and bake, and then it went to like I bet I could do this on my own, and then like how did that? My even brother evolve? was always mad scientist from scratch. For real. Yeah. So a lot of people uh, will say like, you know, why are your cookies so different? And and the honest answer is because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> like I never picked up a cookbook. There was no YouTube back then. Yeah. Uh, I just tried to figure it out and kind of went in a in a what ended up being a pretty unique and complicated direction. Yeah. Uh, but I, I spent about 15 years working on that chocolate chip cookie recipe. Uh, I was a tour musician for 12 years. Okay. Would you play? Uh, I'm I'm classically trained guitar, piano, and I'm a vocal music major. No way. Uh, so I did that for a long time and uh, had a bot surgery on my hand. And uh, I moved to Orlando to work on my second goal in life, which was to open up a comic book shop. No way. Yeah. That's so sick. So I, uh, I, I open up this, this cool little way ahead of its time uh, art gallery slash comic shop in the Winter Park Village called Uberbot. Okay. In the early 2000s. And it was awesome. It was so much fun. And we'd host a lot of art shows and uh, invite comic artists to do non-comic art and show off their personal work, which was yeah. just unheard of at the time. Uh, and I would bring my cookies to these art events and give them out to people. Shut up. Okay. And they started freaking out. Like, where did these cookies come from? How can I order these cookies? And uh, um, like every other small business owner, I didn't survive the 2008 crash. Yeah. Uh, I did outlast the Starbucks in the Winter Park Village, did which, you really? which is my claim to fame. Uh, that's your first claim to fame. Yeah. yeah. So I lost everything. Wow. And, uh, just out of necessity for paying some bills, I started selling cookies out of my kitchen in 2008. That's incredible. And I did that and worked on other recipes and got into cakes and just kind of fell into this whole Gideon's Bakehouse thing. Insane. Where did, uh, before we go into Gideon's next, like, okay, emo kid, what's yeah. your favorite emo band? Oh, I, 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 the Carpenters. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't do like the serious emo band. Like I listen to like soppy ballads. I listen to the Carpenters when I bake. So good. I, uh, every time I'm like, on Saturday mornings, my, my, my kids and I, we all pile in the car. We let mom sleep mm-hmm. and it's always, uh, I miss, I miss emo is the playlist we play. Okay. And I'm like, you guys got to know these people because I care. They, they don't really care, but yeah. it, it fills my soul. Anyways. It'll come back around. It'll They'll care. Back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What about you then? What's your favorite? Oh man. I mean, like I, I could very easily like dashboard conventional to me. I feel like yeah. I just burned them out so much, which is a very like commercialized emo, but yeah, that's probably it. All right. Yeah, man. All right. So Gideon's, where did the, where did the name come from? Like, how did you start that out? Uh, I really do collect old books. Uh, if you go to either of the locations, there's real vintage Victorian era books on the shelves. Yeah. And oh, wow. I keep saying it was like 20 years ago, but I've been saying that for 20, yeah, I was gonna for say, like it's been five, a while, yeah. six years. <laughs> uh, but a long time ago, 
Once upon a time, I was at an estate sale and I bought a collection of old Victorian books. Uh, and in that collection was a cookbook that a little kid was writing in because he wanted to be a baker. Okay. When he grew up and the name scribbled at the back of the book was Gideon and the date the book was published was 1898. Wow. So I'm a kind of a branding brain. That's that's really what I think I do mostly sure. uh, at, at, at Gideon's. Uh, and, uh, the idea to just open up this kid's bakery kind of popped out. That's incredible. And it, and everything fell into place from there. The, the, the theming, the, just the feel, what we are today all just comes from this. Let's open up this kid's bakery. Yeah. Dude. All right. So let's open that, like unpack that. So if you're a musician and then your comic books, you you're a business owner almost as like you're you have to be even to be a musician you have to be sort of like lead gen and understand marketing and all that kind of stuff so how do you how do you go about building a cult business following is the way that I see it like in cult meaning just people are passionate about what you do they love the brand so do you start with the brand first or or is it the cookies first yeah I think uh, I think I didn't realize that being in the music world taught me branding and community yeah. So for me, it was that building of community and that personal connections through what you do that create advocates that go out into the world on your behalf to talk about what you're doing. It's the best kind of marketing. Right, right. Yeah. And, and to this day, that's the only marketing that's ever existed. I've never done, I have no advertising budget. I've, I run the social media myself, but I post like once or twice a month. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they all go insane too. It's like when you're doing new concepts and stuff, you're getting insane engagement. Yeah, there. like I, I try to, I don't post unless there's something really to post about. Like yeah. you're not going to catch me doing a cookie meme or a little dance <laughs> on, uh, on social media. Yeah. Uh, so uh, people pay attention because if I post something, there's something there. There's yeah. something that might only be there for a few hours and then it's gone. Sure. Uh, so yeah, I, I think the, uh, obviously the cookies came first and the, the whole concept of, of what the product is. But as soon as that name clicked in, everything else kind of fell in line and it, it went from being a hobby to potentially a business. I yeah. didn't, I, I, I still question whether it's viable <laughs> or not. <laughs> I think you're doing okay. Yeah. I think you're doing you all know, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So then you go comic book shop kind of closes down, but you were selling cookies and had that. And then what was the moment where you're like, well, maybe I'll just open up it. Was it just East end was first or how did that even so go about? I did try to do some of the farmer's markets, which were really becoming popular in central Florida yeah. at the time. Uh, I was rejected from every single one of them. I still have the letters. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, and uh, then out of nowhere, the bakery at East End Market decided to retire. The owner decided to retire. And East End Market wanted to have a different cottage bakery in the existing space every month through the summer, which is a really cool way, kind as East End up. is, yeah, yeah. to do these little pop-ups that – just uh, put a spotlight on people just working hard and you know yeah. the, the incubator kitchen that the east end market really is mm -hmm. what makes it so great yeah uh and they asked me if i'd be interested i was working at apple at the time no way yeah so uh, uh and testing out a lot of my new recipes on on the staff there sure uh i will often go off on a rant on the cookies and cream cookie and how i wish i never put it on the menu but it was the apple people's favorite <laughs> It's one of ours and too. And it's my least favorite. No way. Don't get me, yeah, easily, easily. Don't get me started. Oh man. All right. Uh, I'm going to, but yeah, we'll leave it for later. We, we can swing back yeah. around on cookies <laughs> and cream if you want. If you want to do hear me rant about why I don't like that cookie for Absolutely. 30 minutes. Yeah. Um, so they, they approached me about doing a pop-up and my big worry was, is anybody going to care? Mm. I only had at that time six flavors and a few cakes and uh, I was talking to some of the previous pop-ups and like, ah, oh, you might have a day here or there that you'll have you know, $50 in sales and $100 in sales. So the idea that I could make a living off of having what really was just six cookie flavors just didn't compute in my brain, uh, especially after losing everything because yeah. you're very cautious and you, you doom oh. and gloom forever. I still am waiting for everything to fall apart. Dude, I feel like, how old are you? 
I'm not telling you. Oh, man. Okay. So, but 08 did a number on a lot of people, including me. So I've been in real estate since 03 and like 08 rolled around and my world imploded, like literally subprime melting. I'm just, I'm newly married. I'm selling everything I own to try to just pay rent. It was the worst, but I think it gave me the hustle I needed in order to get out of it. A, and it keeps me in this, like the back of my mind, like this could all all go away like tomorrow. Yeah. Always. I wake up with that and I fall asleep with that every night still. Yeah. Well, you're in good company. So anyways, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, we don't sleep. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah business owners don't sleep. I even got the app to try to like see if I'm doing <laughs> yeah, any better. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. just, it's the worst. Yep. Uh, but Apple was really supportive. Everybody there wanted me to do it. They gave me a two week break from Apple to go and do, actually, I'm sorry, they did a, a full month uh, 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 off, which is just kind of unheard of Yeah. Uh, to do this. Kind and of a sabbatical, uh, see what you think. Yeah, to see yeah. how it works out. And and based on the feedback from the previous pop-ups, I prepared what I thought was three weeks worth of cookie dough. Uh, and, I, you know, I don't have many employees. I was doing all this stuff by myself. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and I showed up, and uh, all of that cookie dough was gone by 1 o'clock on the first day. Shut up. Yeah, and so that's <laughs> that, that was that, that, that weird thing that you just don't, really think is exists yeah. where you hear people talk about uh, every my life change in this moment <laughs> blah, 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 blah. <laughs> like, get the hell out of here uh but yeah i saw like the whole vision of what gideon's could be in that moment and it just it was like the universe went oh, like this is what this you're is supposed sure. to be doing uh and it's just been madness ever since that day so you wrap up at one o'clock two o'clock you're in your car and you're like what the hell just happened? Oh no! I stayed till seven o'clock that night and apologized really? for and, and, and every single night oh, we sold out. Still, oh yeah, wow. Eastern Mark is open till seven, yeah. so I stayed open till seven. Uh, the uh, we joke Megan was the employee there that worked in that the previous bakery yeah. and helped every like I joked that she came with the lease, so she was my <laughs> first employee. And uh, I would stay till seven and apologize for selling out, explain to everybody what we were doing, sure. and then I would get in my Zion, my Scion XB. And go to Sam's and get flour, chocolate, and just do it all over. Do it all over again and stay up all night, get that dough ready. Next day, do it again and again and again. I'd had to buy so much chocolate, uh, sugar, you know, all the goodies that that little car, I remember the frame of the car hit the tires (laughs) uh, as I'm trying to bring it all back to to the shop. Uh, And it it existed like that for, for a long time. So it was supposed to be a month gig. Yeah. Then what happened? They gave me the, uh, they asked me if I wanted to stay permanently w- within days of the pop-up starting. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and because I had that, that aha moment where the, the universe shined on me, I, I, it was a pretty easy yes. Yeah. I was gonna say, there was no moment where you're looking at the lease, like, Ugh, should I just be doing something in my house? And no, and, and you would uh, appreciate that the lease at Easton market is like two pages. Yeah. Good. It was like, <laughs> It was so, so everything about it is easy. Yeah. And, and I had a built in support system there because, uh, you know, Ashley, Jesse was running the, the kitchen at the time, uh, John, the owner of East End Market. It's such a family thing. And what I love about not only the East End Market, but as it turns out, the local Central Florida community is it's such a supportive, ego free existence they're excited to root you on yeah like it. everybody uh was there to to help and answer questions i didn't know what i was doing i still <laughs> you know still food business is like what the i just I, I make sure now that i bring on people that know so much more than me yeah about when it just comes to the rules and regulations of food and safety and all that great stuff is just so important especially with, given the location of the second yeah uh, a shop yeah uh we have to be like the best of the best and 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 be on top of it so i make sure i bring in people that are uh especially on top of it oh yeah so let's talk about the the small business community a little bit more like what what are some of the who are some of the people that are impressing you in the market right now (sighs) oh i i the, the only negative to answering this is I, I'm going to go home tonight and forget like sure. 10 of the people it have, and feel, doesn't have to feel be a definitive awful. list. <laughs> I mean, I, I will say that I go everywhere. Like sure. my favorite thing to do is, is support, uh, whatever new local thing is open up every bakery. Like there's items on my list. There, there's, there's favorite cakes that, that I have yeah. that I won't put on my menu because I love the way that someone else is doing it and uh, I want to send them there. Sure. Uh, so I, I, I do a lot, I do a lot of that. That's so cool. Um, 
and everybody's been so nice. Yeah. Uh, which is you know, coming from New York. I'm used to like a competitive throat. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. And people ask me all the time, when are you going to open up a bakery in New York? I'm like, Pfft. I was, I Never. literally have that on my list. I was going to say, so you've got the two locations and I'm excited to hear the story, even the, mm -hmm. the Disney Springs location next, but do you ever get that? Like, Hey, I want to be, there's a lot of like local brands even that are starting to expand all over the country. Do you ever think about maybe that in your future? No. Why not? It's, uh, it's not what Gideon's is. Yeah. Gideon's is local bakery, <laughs> uh, but it's also not scalable. So between my two locations, I'm only 1600 square foot of retail. That's yeah. it. Yeah. And right now we're at about 190 employees to meet the daily demand because I'm a dummy and I don't automate anything. Every single thing we do is handmade from scratch. There's only a mixer in that kitchen or a, a line of mixers. Yeah. Uh, and to really scale, I would have to minimize some of that quality. Sure. To be able to volume up. Uh, and I don't want to do that. That's fair. But there's so much more to Gideon's than just the cookies themselves. There's stories to be told. I still personally hire every single person that, that would ever talk to a guest in, in, in the shops. Yeah. Uh, it's a very personal, local community thing. Sure. And I'm scared to spoil that. There's something really special about it. And I think that our, our whole society sort of glamorizes growth and faster and bigger and better. And yet, like, you've actually been able to keep quality really tight yeah. and people really great. And there's still something very special about it. Whereas if it was on every, uh, every street corner, maybe it would lose that. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things that I value about being a part of the Central Florida food scene is how it went from just Olive Gardens and Outbacks <laughs> to being one of the most talked about food scenes in the country. It's wild. But there's a drawback to that. And it's exactly what you just mentioned. Franchises. Yeah. Giant companies coming in. Like now we're on social media and every single day there's a new restaurant opening. Mm -hmm. There's a, you know, another cookie franchise coming in, sure. which I have to pay attention to. Right, that's going to say. Well, uh, that, I feel like there's got, and I, you know, you could say it or not say it, but like, I, you know, you look at like Crumble, it's everywhere. And, sure. and they're okay, right? They're, they've got their thing. Uh, they have a limited supply. They do their things and they've scaled, but there's like no, there's really no soul to, to Crumble, no. right? You show up, you get your cookies and leave. And I don't feel like anybody has the attachment like they do to your brand. Right. And those, those business models aren't created to, to have soul. Yeah. They're created to make money. Yeah. And I'm not a capitalist. It's you know, it's, uh, I, I don't, uh, money is not the driving force in my life. Experiences. Yeah. Uh, and that's what makes me happy. You know, I'm, it's I'm kind of the point of all this. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> like I, if I were only ever just in the East end market, I would financially be fine. Uh, I, I, I don't need, I'm, I'm not greedy. I don't need the, a, a yacht. And then, you know, the, the Caribbean, I just need Co to make cookie sure. guy on the back. Yeah. You know, I got a, you know, I got a, I got a good cats. I got a, I got a happy life, you yeah. know, you know, so that's, that's really what matters. So I try not to ever make it about me and what I want. It's about what Gideon's wants. Yeah. And Gideon's doesn't want to be a crumble cookies. I don't want to be in a plaza. I don't want mediocrity. I want that sense of exclusivity that sense of urgency to get to us, the conversations that we have. Uh, I think it's special. And I'm not saying that I won't ever do another Gideon's. Sure. There might be some creative opportunity that might pop up that just seems like, oh, you know, I've got to scratch gotta, this itch. I, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but if I were a betting man, I would say no. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. So there was a time I heard you, I heard you speak not too long ago and you talked about you had the original location and you were getting pushed to maybe open a second location. Right. So talk about how, how did you go from East end to second location, Disney Springs, one of the most epic places in terms of shopping and probably the country. Yeah. Which still makes no sense that I'm there. <laughs> Someone asked me that they're like, how, how I want what you have. How, right. how do how do we do this? I'm like, well, I think for us, it was like throwing a dart through a, pinhole through another <laughs> pinhole and into the bullseye. Yeah. Like it, it I shouldn't exist out there. Uh, because I'm, I mean, 286 square feet is the original Gideon. Yeah. I'm a single owner business. I don't have partners. I don't have investors. I don't have relationships. Sure. You know, I don't know <laughs> no, anybody. Yeah. I just make cookies, you know, and I care and I, and, and I have stories and I think at the end of the day, that's really what resonated, uh, to open up that door. 
But the decision to get there was a challenging one because I honestly thought I'd never open up another Gideon's outside of Easton Market. Sure. I like being a little secret to the community, which we very, very much were. Dude, I tell you what, when I first got here, that was, talk about secrets. They, mm-hmm. I felt like I was going to find some hidden little gem. And yeah. it still is. And that's the other cool thing about your brand and, and what you've built. But it was like, hey, you've got to go over here and over in Audubon Park. There's this place called East End. Yeah. And if you go inside, there's you got to get there early, though, because the cookies are going to be out, right? Like, there's this whole story that kind of unfolded. And I'm like, so when I showed up, I'm like, well, I'm already satisfied before I even ate the cookie because I got to experience that. And then the cookies were amazing, right? right. And so it's very cool. Sorry to interrupt yeah, no, I, I, I love that people would show up uh, at, at East End and they would leave and then they would get to the stoplight, break off a piece of the cookie and just you turn back <laughs> and get and get more. That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's especially those early days at East End were so just surreal. Yeah. And if it weren't for the community out there, I wouldn't have ever made it yeah. anywhere further. Like their excitement them getting, you know, in line, going down the sidewalk to get that one limited edition item every day is what got the attention of the biggest thing ever. Sure. Uh, but when it became time to grow, uh, the idea of having multiple locations just didn't make any sense to me. Mm. Uh, so I, 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 I had a couple of needs. One was buying power because I, I remember when I opened uh I use real vanilla bean and the cookies. Vanilla bean paste, like a quarter of vanilla bean paste was $32. And uh, uh, within the first six months, it had gone up to $200. And nobody cared. Sure. I mean, like, I, pass now I have to buy pallets of it at a time. But sure. then I just needed like six. And <laughs> no, It was $200, $200. Uh, so I, I thought that, that buying power would be really important part of the requirement for for growth I, it turns out i was wrong oh okay yeah because uh at the end of the day i'm like yeah we're making nine thousand cookies a day uh but as you point out there's giant franchises that are everywhere now yeah. that have eight thousand stores i think one of those franchises just announced that they're opening up ten thousand locations oh, worldwide uh so if they want that chocolate chip if they want that ingredient, I have no hope sure. of ever getting it at all, much less getting it at a good price. We're going to have to figure out where to like plant vanilla beans. Yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> Trust me, I've looked into that. I've looked into that. And pretty soon, there's just going to be the Gideon's Farm yeah, where we're it. just doing uh, every uh, single thing from scratch. Know, We've, talked yeah. We've talked about it. We've talked about it. So buying power was was an important part of it. Uh, telling the story and and being able to create an immersive experience was a huge thing for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then when I thought about that, the only place where that made sense to me was Disney hmm. because escapism is built into their brand Yeah, and people go out there and they feel like they're in a different place. And I wouldn't I, like going to the Easton market was a very respectable place. Mm-hmm. So Gideon's existing in the Easton market immediately gave me some kind of culinary credibility uh, that yeah. maybe I deserve, maybe I didn't, probably <laughs> not, but the perception was there. Yeah. Uh, and I felt the same way about uh, going out to Disney is that escapism was built in and I wouldn't have to work as hard to get people to feel like they've just been transported into another space. So it really, really, really appealed to me, uh, which led me to, to really wanting local representation there. So knowing that that's one of the highest travel places on the planet and knowing that we live in a world now where people travel to try the local foods. That's right. For experiences. Yeah, for right. that, yeah. that experience. That's why I travel. Like, yeah. I, I love that I know when I'm going to go to even something like Savannah, I'm going to Collins Quarter. I'm going to all these different spots that are just favorite places. Yeah. Every, as soon as I land, I'm going to get that favorite coffee spot. Like I do I do all of these things. So I naturally think everyone does what I do. Of course. It's a human experience. Uh, so I really wanted local representation out there. Uh, and I think they did too, because they they know that that's a lot of what people are looking for when they travel now too. So I think I kind of approached it at, at a really fortunate time where everyone was kind of in line with needs. Hmm. And uh, Polite Pig had uh, uh, opened up out there, which is local. Yeah. James Petrakis had asked me when they originally opened, Gideon's was really popping, and he'd come to me and asked if I would do their dessert menu. And I... I was still selling out at one or two o'clock every day. I turn around, I just have my one employee behind me. I'm like, nah, I can't do that. <laughs> but a year later, we kind of swung back around and 
I offered him the chocolate chip cookie as a secret menu item so that if it's uh, if I couldn't get it to him, if I couldn't do it, it wasn't a big deal. I would just give him a little bit, a lot, whatever. Low commitment. We can, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, and he agreed to that. And the, the hope was that there would be some lines that would grow at the Polite Pig that would get Disney's attention. What is this? What are, what's going on over here? Yeah. Uh, and the very first day the cookie was there, uh, the Disney food blog... Yeah, uh, they they took a picture of the the uh, a very nice picture of the yeah. cookie in front of the polite pig sign, and they proclaimed it one of the best things to eat on Disney property. And a few weeks later, I was sitting down at a table talking to Disney. Insane. So it was a very that was that dart just yeah, there. you know, it just kind of all aligned really really perfectly. Uh, and then that was off to the races. That's when the conversation started. But it didn't go super smooth, right? You weren't like, yeah, put me wherever, put whatever. me in the back. <laughs> whatever goes super smooth. Right? <laughs> That's for sure. But like it wasn't, you were like, you kind of got, I don't know about called your shot. Maybe you would call it that. But like you got, you got prime placement at Disney Springs, I feel like. I did. I, I, I wanted to be at that building from day one. Yeah. Uh, even though there was a, a tenant already <laughs> there. <laughs> Lined up, yeah. Uh, but I, I had a... I had a stubborn requirement and the beauty of not being driven by finances is you're driven by that guest experience. You're driven by the, the need to create that no matter what it takes. And yeah. a kiosk isn't going to do that. Mm -mm. So, uh, uh, I, I, I was either brilliant or dumb enough to say no a, a few times. Wait, so they wanted to throw you in like a kiosk, like with the candles and everything yeah, else. A few little, and which is a, a, a perfectly reasonable uh, way to start with a business <laughs> that has <laughs> no experience working in, sure. a, in a theme park. But you were just bold enough to be like, ah, no, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I again, in, in starting to create relationships out there, I met Patrick McKinney, who's my operations manager today. And, you know, the beauty of my team is so much of so many of the people on my team have vast experience working on Disney property. Yeah. Uh, so that they brought that experience to the table and we're all growing all together. Hmm. Like we love each other. We all went to dinner last night. Took, we all took my mom out to dinner for so her good. birthday. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're awesome people, but Patrick opened a boathouse, T-Rex, worked at Polite Pig, yeah. uh, consulted on some openings from some other places out there. So bringing his expertise on board really gave them the confidence that that I think I, that was missing to get bold yeah. and to ask for this building. Uh, and, uh, and it worked. Yeah. This episode of the Orlando Real Podcast is brought to you by the Posit Group Real Estate Agents. If you're looking to sell or buy anywhere in Greater Orlando, we want to be your real estate resource of choice. Make sure you reach out at theorlandoreal.com slash real. Every time I go there, especially in the morning, there's still every day a yeah, line. Yeah, How many memory. years has it been? It's like three, four years. Uh, I think this is going to be the fourth year in January. Yeah. Coming. There's still a line every day. Yeah. It's, it doesn't, you know, uh, I think the only time it ever starts to diminish is when it's 150 degrees. Yeah. Out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and there's the people are still there. They've just melted They're into just the concrete. <laughs> you know, that's, yeah. that's, that's it. But, uh, but yeah, it's been nonstop. We've never not had a person at, at each register since we opened. Incredible. And so, and through like going back to the branding and the merch and all that kind of stuff, I mean, you're doing like trading cards, you're doing all these little takeaways for people and that keeps them coming back. Would you say? Yeah, I, th I bring, I, I run Gideon's like an art gallery more than a bakery. Yeah. So uh, running Uberbot and having these really cool collectibles and limited items at East End Market, nobody cared. Mm -hmm. uh, but why Disney was such a good mix for me is because that my collectible mentality yeah. uh, exists in so much of their customer base. So there's just so many reasons why we sync so perfectly. As a matter of fact, one of the biggest issues that I ran into moving out there was that everybody thought it was Disney. Mm. Uh, and at the time, I was never vocal as being a, the owner of Gideon's because I'm not about me. I like to hide in the shadows. I'm more of a puppet master type. Mm -hmm. But my social media switched to, to being I more than we. Yeah. Just to because my PR brain recognized that that uh, it was the easiest way for people to realize that this isn't a giant corporation. Yeah. This isn't Disney owned. This is a small local single owner bakery. Yeah. They want to connect with somebody. That's yeah. we've often thought about like rebranding what we do to like taking my name Posick off of a lot and just making it 
Parks Realty or something right. like that. And yet we find that most people reach out and they're like, hey, I might not work with Ken, but I know that I want to work with his organization. And like, I'm sure they feel very similarly to it to you. Right. I want to unpack kind of like working with people and growing. So going from individual guy to have you said 190 people in an organization, something like that. It's kind of wild. Yeah. yeah. What do you feel <laughs> like is too, it's too wild? <laughs> Does it make any sense yeah. on paper? There's, I'm sure there's, there's been ups and downs with employees and all that kind sure. of stuff. Like what is, what does that growth scene look like taking it away maybe from just the cookies and that sort of, but just being a, a brand owner, a business owner, like what are some of the, the ups and downs you've had to go through in your growth? Uh, I'm obviously people is, is a huge part of it. That's I think in the first year of, of being at Disney Springs, we had, had to hire so many people so fast yeah. that it was really hard to connect and find the right people. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't hire salespeople. There's no metrics for my team to follow. Mm-hmm. I just want them to have fun and talk and take care of each other. Uh, and usually I'll do that through like a two hour interview where I'm talking about Star Wars and Avatar The Last Airbender. Yeah. Like the, uh, I, there's a new season of, uh, of Arcane coming up that I'm super <laughs> excited about. Uh, just geeking out with people, getting to learn their stories, telling them a little bit about mine, hunting for some understanding of, of not only who they are, but what kind of emotional maturity they carry mm. with them. Uh, and that's, that's a key for me is, is hiring uh, people that care about themselves, uh, care about the guests, care about their, their team on an equal level. Yeah. Uh, and there's, you know, there's some amazingly, uh, uh, epic crashes and burns, <laughs> uh, and, and that is all small business owners sure. uh, deal with, but I mean, there's so much great. There is, it is. I mean, like, Growing with people has actually become my favorite thing. Yeah. Like, I mean, obviously selling house, like we do a lot of stuff with media and that kind of thing as we do, but like getting to grow with people and get to succeed through people is like my greatest joy. Yeah. So do you have a, um, do you have like an avatar of who you think of in your head of like, Hey, they need like these kind of, these adjectives need to match up for them to be a good Gideon's employee or like somebody that's going to be, or is it like, is it feeling culture? What is it? Yeah. I, I, I like people to be passionate. Yeah. And I don't really care so much about what they're passionate about. Mm. I just, I love for people to talk uh, and excitedly tell me what they love, even if it's something I don't care at all about. Yeah. You know, uh, that, that excites me. Like, uh, and cause they're going to resonate with those. There's so many different human beings. Oh, God, online. Yeah. yeah, for sure. They're going to resonate with somebody. My joke is I don't just don't talk about sports unless it's Quidditch. <laughs> But that's because I'm a nerd and, you know, I have to make the joke. So are you a Slytherin? So believe it or not, I, I, I know I appear as Slytherin, but uh, I always test Gryffindor. Do you really? Yeah, I'm a Boy Scout. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. All right, fair enough. Where did the gargoyle come from? Uh, so it's funny, that, that particular building, it, uh, one of the reasons why I wanted that building is because I wanted to put a gargoyle on the roof. <laughs> what, what's uh, the story behind that? It's the, There is a story behind the name of the gargoyle. But I can't tell you. Oh, no. Yeah, okay. it's super, it's super, like there's so much secrecy around the origins of the name and, and how to say it. Uh, it's, it's, it, he even has his own social media that I admit I've completely just been too busy to deal with. And you have to like to stumble upon it? Yeah. yeah uh, but if you send a, a message of, of you saying his name, if you say it right, if you send like an audio recording, He'll follow you and therefore grant you his protection. Nice. Come on. But I think he's follows six people. With Gideon's gargoyle. <sighs> I'm going to, I'm going to look out for it. Then. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, M- Mike Reyes is my art director and, uh, and he had his first art gallery show at Uberbot and we've just been like, I met him in the early two thousands and we we're just brothers. Yeah. And a, a lot of, the characters at Gideon's the, from the gargoyle to the, the latest one this month. And there's been one almost every single month is just us having a good time and telling each other stories and making each other laugh. Uh, you know, the very first uh, character we, we released was Stuart Valencia. He's the, uh, the cautionary tale of you are what you eat. Okay. And he was a boy that ate so many oranges that he turned into a boy with an orange head. That's incredible. Man. Uh, and we were released that, we released him along with an orange pecan chocolate chip cookie. And in the description of the cookie, I said that the, the orange 
pieces that are on top of the cookie are uh, that Stuart supplies <laughs> them to us. And we don't know where he gets it from, but he promised us that they're organic. <laughs> All right. So you're, I mean, you're, you're creating this marketing master, like this marketing clinic right now, because I feel like, do you have any other brands that you feel like go deep that way? Maybe like even outside of Orlando, just that get that deep storytelling beyond just the product. It's interesting. I, 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 as a branding nerd, I should have a bunch of stuff to spout off. Yeah. I live in my own little bubble. It's incredible. Yeah. And I, I, and I'm like this with bakeries doing baking too. Like celebrity chefs will come in and I have no idea who they are. (laughs) All right. Well, actually I've got that question on here next. So I saw Ryan Seacrest had your box and he devoured an entire cookie. He did. Yeah. And I was like, that's wild because I, he's not an Orlando guy. Right. But he knows the brand, love the cookie. Who else has been like somebody that maybe you've seen online or has tagged you and you're like, Holy crap! They just oh, we get people out there. We we get people at Disney. I'm like a lot. I'm sure. Yeah, I mean they'll, they'll VIP. They'll let us know that there's a they're coming in. Yeah, yeah, which is cool. That is cool. But I never talk about it. I know, which is like even so more. The, like the Ryan Seacrest I actually posted about because I had nothing to do with that. Yeah. But if someone comes to me and and we let them in, we we take care of them. We have good conversation with them. I feel it's exploitative for me to go, oh, I just sold cookies to, you know, uh, I I don't want to do, I don't do that. Sure. Uh, So yeah, we, we have, we have like, there's, there's some that, that love the candles and come and get candles. Yeah. But yeah, I never talk about it or post about it. If they, if they asked me to, or, or we talked about it, I, there was one uh, celebrity that we love and they come very often that, that even said, I'll, uh, thank you for doing this for us. I'll post about it. I'm like, I don't need to post about it. Yeah. It's cool. Just enjoy. Just enjoy yourself. You're a better man than many. Well, again, a lot of it just all swings back to not being financially motivated or growth motivated. Sure. We're, we're fine. Right. I just want everybody to enjoy their experience and it doesn't matter who they are. And to be honest with them, because I live in that bubble, most of the time I have no idea. (laughs) (laughs) I've I've become that old man and I'm like, who? (laughs) Who's that? He's a big deal on TikTok. You're like, I'm yeah, on TikTok. trust me, I get that. Yeah. We, we we had that <laughs> recently, and sometimes it's not always in a positive way. Oh, really? Yeah. So we we also will sometimes have a, a really like we don't do the influencer thing. We've sure. never let anybody in, so we we say no a lot. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. It keeps the exclusivity. What's uh, so you you brought us a candle today, and it smells mm-hmm. incredible. You do cookies and cakes, and you do the the cart. What other what's a product that you've always maybe wanted to make that you just maybe haven't yet? I mean, there's, there's, there's certain flavors, like I'm from, you know, from New York. So I, I yeah. haven't, I've yet to do anything cannoli related mm. and, and it's it, just because it hasn't been right yet. Okay. Uh, things like the banana bread chocolate chip cookie, which is now a regular item. I spent 20 years trying to f- feel like that was right. Uh, and once it did, I couldn't let it go. <laughs> uh, but there's, uh, there's, there's things in the, like I'm, we do cookies, cake and cold brew at the Disney Springs mm-hmm. location. And there's so many things in that coffee realm that we haven't tapped into yet. That's just really exciting and important to us. It's just hard to find the time of the day to yeah. do it all. Even with that many st- people on staff, uh, it's uh, uh, it, it's always this crazy hustle. So, you know, I, I, I mentioned earlier, never another Gideon's most likely, but that doesn't mean that some of those characters that exist in the Gideon's world might not have an opportunity to branch off into their own worlds and be their own things that might be scalable, that might make more business sense, that don't need 190 employees. Yeah, right, yeah. Uh, to run. cinematic universe. Yeah, yeah. We, we have we, we have about three things uh, uh, just kind of actively in uh, R&D mode right now, just, for, so cool. just for fun. R&D mode, you have, how often do you sit down and try? And Is it a weekly, a monthly? Like how yeah, often you're do you? are catching me today on taste test day, like I told you. I'm yeah. surprised I haven't fallen asleep yet. <laughs> Thanks for staying awake. Yeah. You could coddle, coddle me you, and get yeah, me back. Coddle you, coma, yeah. Yeah, because it's a taste test day. Uh, once a week is the is the goal. Yeah. Uh, there are there are weeks where it's three, four, five times a week that we all, all get together and, and, and test things out. When it comes to Gideon's at the end of the day, it's just what I think. Mm-hmm. I try to not be that with some of the other, some other stuff. Stuff, yeah. So how many how many uh, tr- things did you try that just don't make it out? Like, is it like ninety percent? Wow, yeah. that sounds like a lot of fun at the same time. I know you're in a coma, like sugar coma, but still, that sounds incredible. Yeah, sometimes I feel like a jerk because uh, <laughs> you know I, I 
I, I want everyone to be encouraged and you know, it used to be every recipe was my recipe yeah. and that's the core of what Gideon's is, but I don't want that. Yeah. Uh, how having that many employees and so many people working in the kitchen, not have a creative outlet and just making red velvet cake all day. Yeah. What fun is that? Damn. So a lot of our secret slices are some of the, the cake bakers that come up with their own thing and I sell it for just one day and let's see how it did. Yeah. You know, it's got to get the, the green light to go out, but I'm not going to give you any input on what it should be. I'm going to let you do that. And then we have other things where what I do now and, and, and part of my approach is trying to train the team on my palate. So instead of giving them feedback on what I think about what they might have brought to me as some special weekend item that we're going to release, I, I challenge them to tell me what I'm going to say Ooh. before I say it. How's that received? Good. Yeah. We're doing really well. Like the team right now has been... Uh, incredible. Some days better than others. <laughs> I'm sure. You know, but uh, mediocrity, I've said it once already, I think. Mediocrity is my enemy. Uh, so uh, I don't believe in the best. It's actually one of my pet peeves. Is mm. This is the best this and this and this and this city is the best pizza and the best tacos. And blah, 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 blah. It's one person's palate. Sure. That's not. It's subjective. That's not how food works. Yeah. <laughs> like the banana bread chocolate shibuki is the most important to me because when I was 10, the first food I tried to make by myself was a banana chocolate chip muffin. So the reason why it was so hard to turn that into a cookie is because I needed it to match the flavor profile that the 10 year old me cherished. So I adore that cookie yeah. because it's so sentimental. If you grew up and your parents force fed you bananas, you're going to hate that cookie and you're not wrong to hate that cookie. <laughs> It's these memories, these experiences that create our palates. So the idea that one person on Instagram can be some all things authority all people, on yeah. what the best is doesn't make any sense to me at all. I don't understand why. I like I like seeing where people are going, yeah. and there's so many people out there that are like, "Oh, this is what I think." Versus this is a 6.8. <laughs> I love it when people take one bite of something and rate it. <laughs> Can you imagine like as an art gallery background, yeah, yeah, yeah. like walking in an art gallery and going, that painting is Four, an 8.2. Yeah. <laughs> that point is a 6. Point. Like, Get out of here. Get oh, out of here man. So we just try to do our best. Yeah. And that can be challenging because you've got to hit that ceiling. We can't make this dessert any better. We can't make this coffee any better. This is the best ingredients we can source. This is where our knowledge stops, it's done. And often that will take one or two years. So we might drop a new limited edition cookie. Uh, and I laugh when people are like, hey, why don't you, uh, you know, there's two weeks to a new month. And they're like, sure. hey, why don't you do a blah, blah, blah next month? Yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, let me, <laughs> we just <laughs> my, my, my out, team yeah. is laughing because they know that it's a two year thing. You know, you've thing been, you've been doing Halloween probably last year. You dialed it in for what's coming up in yeah, October. Or actually, like I, I will admit to you that we're still working on some of the Halloween weekend releases right now. That's oh. what I was doing today. Oh man. So it's, it's, it is down to the wire. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. I'm going to ask you about the cookies and cream thing in a minute. Cause I do want to oh, end on that, God, but you have to, but you want to end on cookies I, and cream. I do. Yeah. Crazy. So I, I want to say uh, one of the things I, I remember hearing you say before was that um, you, when you were in East End Market, and this is going around like the type of business owner you are, and and I think that maybe a, a lot of other people could attract from you, is that you have coffee in Disney Springs, but you didn't have coffee in East End Market, and there's a reason why. Yeah, lineage is in East End Market. They're my neighbors. But you could have blown them away, right? Not, come on. I'm not a jerk. That's, that's not local business. That's not supporting local business. That's, that's what I'm trying not, to get to. Yeah, that's not being a good neighbor. That's not cool. But do you think a lot of people would? I, I'd, I'd, I'd like to say no. Yeah. Are there people that would? 100%, sure. Yeah. But I, I, I mean, Florida is, I, I have learned that Florida is an interesting copycat state mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to business. Like, and I was shocked that it took so long for there to be 800 cookie spots around. Yeah. For a long time, it was just me. Yeah. Uh, which is cool. Uh, and and the, the, nothing's really changed. We, I think part of the, the goal of, of, of Gideon's is it is its own. It's very, it's filled with soul. It is an experience. It is its own thing. So, you know, my, my worry with the, the franchise world is just patterns. Mm. You know, look at the yogurt <laughs> places everywhere and they're everywhere, everywhere, everywhere until they're nowhere. Gone, yeah. Cupcakes. 
cupcakes going everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Gone. Yeah. And now the new thing is cookies, cookies, cookies everywhere, everywhere. It's not going to keep, like, you're not going to keep doing 10,000 more over and over and over again. Sure. But I don't feel like we belong in that world. Well, you're, you became, you created a category of one. Yeah. And I think that that's a very interesting, unique, that's what a lot of people are after. Yeah. It's a lot of people saying the best this, the best that, but like you've actually created your own category, which it's hard to compete with you when you actually have soul. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, an adherence to my holy trinity of experience, which is making sure that the desserts are the best that we know how to do, uh, creating a, a story uh, through the escapism of the physical space and being a good member of the community, you know, and that's, that's where the team comes in. Uh, that's why I'm not a kiosk, <laughs> you know, and, and that's why we work so hard to make sure that each menu item is, is the, the best that we can put out there because you, you, all three of those things are important to be Gideon's Bakehouse. I'm not going to Uber eat you cookies <laughs> because now you're missing part two and three. I'm certainly not sending you cookies in the mail. I don't want your first Gideon's experience to be a four day old cookie because it got lost. Right. And it's been sitting, you know, in the humidity. Yeah. It's the chocolates bloomed. No, that'll no, make it on Instagram no. right away. <laughs> yeah. Cringe. Yeah. There's even instructions not to put your cookies in the microwave. Is there really? Yeah. And in, the in the box, it says it'll bring sham on your family. If you put a cookie. Like I'm going <laughs> to know it. I feel it right so here. That's it so hurts good. because hot cookies are easy, man. Like, yeah. but all you taste is chocolate. Yeah. It's, and, and yes, it's that nostalgic Nestle cookie out of the oven that you sure. know, but the real challenge is what, how good is a cookie at room temperature? Mm. And most people don't pass that test yeah. because it, to be honest with you, it's mostly flour that you're eating. I don't do that. So, uh, I want you to taste the layers of flavor. I want you to get all that. And as soon as you nuke it, it's chocolate. It's chocolate. That makes sense. Yeah. All right, let's wrap up with the uh, cookies and cream. Oh, so I, we get cookies, we get Gideon's cookies for our entire staff as like a, one of the parting gifts from our Christmas party every uh -huh. year. Like, so now the staffs, they've got their families, everybody, there's this huge pile of Gideon's in the corner and most of them ask, half of them ask for cookies and cream. So why, why no cookies and cream? You're basic for one. It's basic cookies. Bitch. Cream. cookies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that what it is? No, so there's, there's, there's a legit reason. There's okay, a, all right. my, my team's so sick. Like I will rant about this in line and I will tell people in line, they're like, what do you, what's your favorite cookie? What should I get? I'm like, anything that speaks to you, but cookies and cream. So here's what? my pitch. Okay. Here's my pitch. All right. Uh, I, I'll talk to you about it first from a business standpoint. All right. Uh, I might be the only baker on the planet that only uses double stuff because there is no wholesale avenue for double stuff cookies. Why, why, why is there not, why, why is there single stuff anyways, by the way? That's well, my curiosity. Well, the, the, the answer is because it's the cheaper uh, of the okay. two. Yeah, that's fair. So if, if I only used regular Oreos, you're not going to get the cream part. It's going to be a drier cookie. It's going to be more of the chocolate wafer. You're going to miss that, that cream in it. So I legit buy my double stuff from Walmart because they're the best price on sure. the market. Yeah. Uh, they've even accidentally shipped it to my house once and there's like 8,000 <laughs> double stuff sitting yeah. on my front door. Uh, so it's the most expensive Gideon's cookie mm. on a margin that's already paper thin, paper thin, the labor, the overhead, <laughs> the ingredients, sure. my, my ingredients costs have tripled since I opened up at Disney Springs. I've oh. never raised my prices. Wow. And uh, we've learned in the last few weeks that chocolate is about to go up by 65%. Why is that? Which is not sustainable. That's a whole nother, whole nother podcast. Okay, a whole go ahead. nother podcast. Uh, but it's going to hurt, yeah. uh, especially the small guys. The big 10,000 stores can probably negotiate away from that. I'm stuck. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it's a very expensive cookie. But the real reason is I made that cookie to taste like an Oreo milkshake and a cookie. And it yeah, does. It does, 100%. Great. Have you had an Oreo milkshake before? Yeah. Then you don't need the cookie. Oh. Everything else is its own different experience. Yeah. You know, it's just a, it's an Oreo milkshake and a cookie. You're just replicating a flavor profile that you know and love instead of experiencing something different. And I want you to experience new and exciting things, not go back to the cookies and cream well. I'll accept that. Yeah. That makes sense. It does. Okay, it does, man. this that has been so much fun. I could spend a lot more time. I appreciate you, you doing. I this. want to talk to you and talk about you oh, and man. your thoughts. So I will say before, because I know I talk too much. Uh, 
I, I enjoy watching your videos because it's hard for, I do live in my little bubble and I don't know what's going on around me as much. And you've really helped with that. Oh, uh, not just talking about real estate, but what's talking about what's going on in the communities. Uh, and it gets me excited to check out like a new area yeah. and do new developments. Uh, I, I think it's great. So I appreciate the work that you do. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's um, I feel like we're an interesting town that's ha it's in this crossroads. We've been so transient for so long. Yeah. And I think that like people crave community. We've actually done, we paid for research studies on this and like, what do people actually want out of community? That's going to cause them to like put down roots and stay. And selfishly, I don't want my kids to move away. And I'm just like, how do we, how do we create like this community in Orlando and how would we go deeper to make people realize this is a great place that they can call home for the, for the duration. Right. And uh, it's cool stories like you that, that make it part of people wanting to stay. Well, I hope that, uh, that all of these new people that are coming to central Florida do seek out the local, appreciate that local yep. because that's what keeps us around. It's awesome that we've attracted so much, but the more we get the franchises, the more we get the giant uh, corporations that are going, Ooh, Orlando is a cool food scene. Let's open up, you know, 10 of these coffee Contest, shops. Yeah. Uh, the more expensive that square footage cost gets and the more it pushes out people like me. And then all of a sudden, Central Florida is now reverted back to being all those Olive, Olive Gardens. Gardens and Outbacks. Well uh, so support local Look to see his local. Enjoy what you love. I'm, I, yeah, I, yeah. you know, if, if, <laughs> if uh, you know the, if you're obsessed with the chain, like even when it comes to like my little world, if you love that better than me, then awesome. I'm sure. not pissed at you for it, right? You know, but there, if you're part of the community and you really support local and you want to see that grow, that's how you do it, man. So good. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Awesome. <laughs>still here hey make sure you follow us over on instagram it's at the orlando reel to get updates on everything going on here in orlando